Hi, uh, welcome to Astro Journey UK. Um, today's video uh, originally was going to be a, a different video to this one. Um, I'll start off with um, my imaging of the Horsehead Nebula um, in my back garden in, uh, in Birmingham. Um, and my plan was to actually image the best Horsehead Nebula that, that I have to date. Um, so about, around about this time last year, um, I imaged the Horsehead Nebula using my Skywatcher ATD uh, Pro telescope and um, using sort of RGB filters. Um, but since getting the Red Cat, I wanted to try imaging it with the Red Cat and see, um, see the difference that I could get in terms of changes in processing and things like that. So I recorded that video and I got about six and a half hours, six and three quarter hours worth of integration time. And um, basically it was getting into the weekend, the weather was looking good, but I was actually going down to visit my parents. So uh, I decided to sort of, um, as any astrophotographer would do, um, you're going away to see the family, so uh, what do you do? You, you pack your astro gear with you as well. Um, so I took some, uh, s some stuff down, uh, down with me, um, and they live in a Bortle Class 4 zone. Um, so it was a good opportunity to sort of see what the differences were between Bortle uh, Class 6 guys and, and Class 4. Uh, you see all of the images in terms of this is what it looks like and what light pollution looks like. Um, so I thought it was useful just to actually have a practical demonstration of here's some data that I captured from class 6 with the same kit, here's the same, um, same target, same time of year, um, here's what I could capture in a, a Bortle class 4 sky. So uh, that's what this video is going to be, so uh, yeah, let's get into it. Hi, uh, welcome to Astro Journey UK. In tonight's video, I'm going to be battling Storms Eunice and Franklin and whatever else they're called and um, try and actually image the um, Horsehead Nebula and get my best ever image. Um, basically, I've got a bit of a calm between storms, I think it is, and uh, yeah, hopefully, I should be able to get a good shot. So, uh, I wasn't actually going to be planning on being out tonight. It was meant to be uh, cloudy, but uh, I went out for a bit of a walk after uh, after work and um, it's completely clear so uh, uh, getting some dinner on um, quickly ran out and uh, got the rig set up uh, it's a bit of a mishmash of, uh, of rigs tonight um, normally I have my ATED Pro on, on this particular rig but um, seeing as it was a bit of a last minute thing I decided just to put the red cat on here um, and also ran into some problems because the ASI Air Pro and the EQ6R Pro don't play nicely with each other without a firmware update so I've had to uh, not use the cable that takes the USB straight into um, into the mount and down here I've got the uh, got the SynScan controller dangling and my um, my what was it USB uh, to whatever this thing is it's got a special number, I'll put it on the uh, description. Um, and that goes into the uh, ASI Air Pro device. So, um, yep, the plan is to image the Horsehead and Flame Nebula. Uh, I've been getting some data on this, I've probably got about six hours, but um, hoping tonight I can probably maybe get another three, three hours, I think. Uh, it would be good to break double figures with this, but I don't think I'm gonna be able to do that tonight. Um, I think other things just to uh, mention on this particular rig is um, yeah because I don't have the um, antenna with um, uh, the pro devices I um, you do with the plus um, what I'm using instead is this little box here which is basically a um, Ethernet over power line um, adapter so you plug in get into here you can see there the white Ethernet cable goes into the uh, the ASI air goes into that and then that basically goes all the way through the power cables um, into the house and into the, the router in the house. So um, I can use this device uh, for the comfort and warmth of my house rather than uh, freezing outside. Uh, so I think that's that pretty much. So we've got the uh, first sub done now. Uh, everything's looking good there. Um, stars are looking sharp. There's no trailing or anything like that. 
guiding's looking good and so what I'm going to do now is go inside in the warm just keep an eye out uh, using the app to just see if everything's going okay um, I did look at the uh, forecast again and there's plan for drizzle in about 50 minutes or so which is just typical um, so yeah just gonna keep an eye on that and I might have to run out and put a cover over this but hopefully not so uh, as you can see here on the uh, on the ASI Air app uh, guiding is going okay uh, seen it a bit better than this before but um, not sure that's a rushed setup it should be pretty much level of polar aligned and it's uh, looking good from that point of view um, but I think that's good enough anyway uh, looking at the first image that's come through so tapping onto images going into uh, light auto run and here we have a single sub uh, from the one shot color camera um, and you can just faintly see the horse head nebula um, upside down and then the flame nebula in the top right hand corner um, everything's looking fairly sharp and we can just have a quick look at uh, detect stars get it to just see what the uh, star size is um, and yeah about two and a half um, which is fairly respectable I think um, that's all manually focused using the Batonoff mask that came with the red cat scope um, yeah does does the job I think it works really well that does So uh, the time's about quarter to ten now, uh, it's getting a bit windy, uh, it's beginning to cloud over a bit as well now so uh, I think we'll have to call it quits for tonight, um, put a cover on the uh, on the scope and uh, yeah get some, uh, get some sleep. So tonight I've got a couple of rigs uh, set up, so over here on the uh, right hand side I've got my Skywatcher Star Adventure Pro mount, um, just with my Canon 60D and a 50mm lens and the aim is to image the whole of the Orion constellation with that. It's a... Come around here. Uh, it's an Astro modified camera. So uh, there's the IR and uh, UV filter removed from in front of the sensor. And then I've got an SV Bonnie, SV Boney, I'm never sure how you pronounce that, um, light pollution filter. So it's a board of four sky here. And just on the top um, is an interval, interval timer. It's a wireless one. So it plugs into the camera and then I've got a remote control to control the imaging there. And over here, uh, I've got my Red Cat 51 telescope um, on my Skywatcher EQ5 Pro mount and that's going to be trained on the Horsehead Nebula which should hopefully rise around about here um, when it gets dark and then it's going to move all the way over here it should have completely uninterrupted clear skies.
So the uh, night's going really, really well tonight. Um, so I've got the, the rig over here, the Red Cat 51 uh, taking images of Horsehead Nebula, which you're not going to be able to see in this camera because well, you might just be able, to, be able to see Orion up there. Um, yeah, taking uh, 300 second exposures. Uh, I've got a good 23 so far. Uh, they all look really good. Nice and dark as well on Portland for Sky. Um, and then over here on the right hand side I've got um, my 50mm lens um, taking the whole of uh, the Orion uh, constellation trying to get all of Barnard's loop in there as well that's um, imaging 60 second subs and um, yeah they're looking pretty good as well and then we've got it down here um, just my other camera taking a time lapse of the whole night so uh, really pleased with how everything's going tonight um, should have a good comparison between uh, Bortle 4 uh, sky images versus Bortle 6 um, images of the horse head.